Hi folks, it's been a while since I've posted a video. I spent the second half of last year working at Lund University in Sweden and since getting back here to Sydney I've uh, had a lot of things to do. But I was listening to Robbie Buck's uh, evening show on the ABC the other night and heard a very interesting story that's motivated me to post this video today. The story was about the definition of a siphon and there's a physicist at uh, Queensland University of Technology, a guy named Stephen Hughes, who's lodged a correction with Oxford English Dictionary um, disputing the original definition. So the definition that's been standing for quite some time is that atmospheric pressure is what drives the fluid through the tube in a siphon. He claims that it's not atmospheric pressure and instead that it's gravity that drives that effect. This is, story's been doing the rounds of both the general and the science media in the last few days, so I wanted to do a little bit of homework on it. And I went to one of my favourite physics news sites, Physorg, and there they had uh, the story along with a few quotes from Dr Hughes one which said that the column of water acts like a chain with the water molecules pulling on each other via hydrogen bonds. Um, and in this article it actually refers to a paper that he's had published in a journal called Physics Education very recently. So I went and had a look at that journal paper. It um, has the same, same claim and it also says that a very common misconception is that siphons work through atmospheric pressure pushing water through the tube of the siphon. He does a couple of experiments in this paper trying to um, back this conclusion and so what I wanted to do today was show you two very simple experiments, you should be able to do them yourself at home, that demonstrate that uh, this claim that it's, it's gravity and the stickiness of water that makes your siphon work is actually incorrect. So let's go through now and we'll do those two experiments. So the first experiment I have set up here, I have two beakers of water, a high beaker and a low beaker. And the normal way that a siphon works is you have a tube, it's stuck into the high beaker, it's stuck into the low beaker, you probably prime your siphon first, um, usually by taking the bottom of the hose and sucking the liquid through, and then that liquid flows from the top container to the bottom container. Okay? I'm going to do this slightly differently, I'm going to have my container down the bottom, my container at the top at usual, but rather than sucking the liquid through, I'm actually going to prime my hose from the top. It doesn't make much too much difference the operation if I fill the tube all the way to the, to the brim, but what I'm going to do is deliberately leave a very small bubble in the top of it. So let's just prime this tube. I need to fill it most of the way up. Like so. And then very carefully so I don't get red liquid all over myself. Put the hose in the top. Okay, so this is how you normally run a siphon if you were doing it at home. At the moment, I've got a cork stuck in the bottom so that the water can't run through. And what should happen in a siphon is when I take the cork out of the bottom, that liquid should run through and it should keep going. Now, the way we've got this set up with this air bubble in the top allows us to test this this claim that uh, it's hydrogen bonds between the water molecules that makes this thing work. Because what should happen here, if it's true that you have uh, hydrogen bonds in here, is that uh, this drop of water getting pulled down by gravity will pull the next one down, and the next one will pull the next one down, the next one will pull the next one down, and this would work all the way through the siphon, except there's a small problem. When you get up to the top here, where you hit the uh, boundary between the liquid and the air, there's no longer any more water to pull. And of course, there's no hydrogen bonds between water and air, and so what should happen if this is really an effect due to just hydrogen bonds and not atmospheric pressure is either that this liquid falls out of the tube but it's unable to pull any liquid out of this vessel because it's not connected by a continuous stream of water or the siphon just doesn't work at all. But instead if it's due to atmospheric pressure what will happen in here is that this liquid will fall due to gravity, it will decrease the pressure in here you have a pressure difference between the air inside the tube, the liquid in the vessel, and the air outside. And that pressure difference, that's that slightly higher pressure of atmosphere compared to this slightly lower pressure of gas inside the tube, should suck the water, and the siphon should just run, right? It will take this bubble, it will spit it out the bottom, and the siphon will run on its way through. So it's a very clear result. If one thing happens, it's one thing. If one other thing happens, it's the other. So let's try this experiment. I can take my tube down here at the bottom and I can pull my bung out of the bottom and sure enough the siphon starts running. You've all seen that the bubble goes right through and it only stops when the tube runs out of contact with the water. Okay? There's no way that that would have happened had it been a requirement for a continuous column of water from one vessel to another that has to pull from one side to another, much like this chain model that's proposed by Stephen Hughes. 
So that's the first experiment, and now I'll change the setup slightly and come back and do the second experiment. Okay, so I've now set up for the second experiment, and the second experiment relates to whether atmospheric pressure is important in the role of the siphon. So it's the same setup as before. I've got a vessel down here. I've got a hose running from high to low. I've changed the upper vessel just slightly. Okay, I've made it so that I can seal it. And so I've got a lid here, and there's two connections. One connects to the pipe that runs down to the lower vessel. The copper tube here runs all the way down to the bottom, just like a straw in a drinking glass. And so this makes sure that I'm always in contact with the liquid, even though the level of this liquid runs down through the container. The second one over here is just open at the top and it's connected to a short copper tube that stops just underneath the neck of the bottle. And so this allows me to change the pressure of the air just above the liquid here. So I can blow and suck, and you see I can change the pressure there and drive this thing. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to start the siphon the way you normally would. So I'm going to suck the liquid through here and then let it run through the bottom and the siphon will start going. And it should just keep going and going and going quite happily for a little while because the atmospheric pressure here and gravity. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start playing with this atmospheric pressure. If I stick my finger over the top of this hose, what will happen is that as this liquid lowers, it will reduce the pressure of this gas up here because it can't pull any gas in through that hose anymore. And if the claim that it's got nothing to do with atmospheric pressure at all is correct, the siphon should just keep trundling on happily the way it was before and it shouldn't be affected by that whatsoever. If it turns out that it's driven by atmospheric pressure, because that pressure is going to decrease in here, that siphon should slow down and eventually stop. The other thing I can do, of course, is I can add some pressure to this, and if it didn't care about atmospheric pressure, it wouldn't change it. But what you'll find is, because atmospheric pressure does play an important role in the siphon, it will actually speed that siphon up. So let's do this experiment now, and I'll just show you how it happens. So we want to be fairly careful about sucking the liquid through. And there's my siphon running. You can see the liquid coming out down here. And so it will quite happily drip away as long as I want it to run. You can see the liquid levels coming down here in the bottle. And so now if I block this tube at the top, you'll notice that the siphon stopped. And if I let it go again, the siphon starts because now the air can come back in and return this to atmospheric pressure. If I put my thumb over, it will stop because the pressure above the liquid becomes less than atmospheric pressure. I can start it again. And if I make the pressure in here higher than atmospheric pressure, the siphon actually goes faster. See? So, atmospheric pressure is actually a really vital part of operating the siphon. It's not just gravity and it's not just pressure on its own. It's actually a mixture of the two. But just to show you something really interesting, because um, you don't entirely need gravity to have a thing that operates much like a siphon. If I bring my siphon hose up to the same level as the liquid, the siphon will stop because no longer has gravity able to pull the liquid down through that tube. But if I now start adding a little bit of pressure, I can restart that flow. And down in the lab, we actually have a siphon that operates very much like this. We actually pump liquids uphill. What we do is we pump liquid helium. It's a, a liquid that is at minus 269 degrees Celsius. And so it sits inside its vessel and it's boiling while it does that. While it's boiling, it's creating the helium equivalent of steam, the vapour, and that increases the pressure in this, and that pressure is able to then drive that liquid against gravity uphill from one place to another. At the end of the day, it's still a siphon, right? It's a U-shaped tube that transfers liquid from one place to another. It's just that we've changed that balance between atmospheric pressure and gravity in order to, rather than use gravity to help us move the liquid, we use atmospheric pressure to push against the liquid, um, push against gravity to make that liquid go across. So let me just do this again real quick for those who don't believe. If I put my thumb over the top of this, the siphon stops and it will stop for as long as I want and eventually actually the siphon will just collapse completely. So with no atmospheric pressure, no siphon, no matter how much gravity you give it.